various kinds of lifts, hoists, and elevators have been around for thousands of years, but they were generally considered too dangerous for people to ride. A broken rope would mean a quick and violent death. They had such a bad reputation that when Elijah Otis invented his safety elevator, he found them difficult to sell. That is, until 1854, when he built a four-story elevator at the New York World's Fair. In front of a crowd of curious onlookers, he rode his elevator to the top and then commanded his assistant to cut the rope with an axe. When the rope split, the elevator fell only a few inches and stopped. He repeated the demonstration every hour of the exhibition and survived to see his safety elevator business take off. Otis reveals his simple but reliable idea in his patent application but it's difficult to make out, even zoomed in. I'll build a scale model to illustrate better. A simple elevator rides rails up and down and is held aloft by a simple cable. If the cable breaks, the elevator drops. Otis's elevator had a mechanism between the cable and the elevator car. When there is tension on the cable, the levers retract, allowing the car to move freely. But when the cable breaks, the tension is released, and a spring pushes the levers, engaging the pawls along the rails, holding it securely. I don't have room for a full-scale elevator, but building a half-scale model should be big enough for me to take it for a ride. The basic frame of the elevator car is built from plywood and 2x4s. When the elevator is running normally, it's supported by the mechanism that operates the levers. A steel plate helps reinforce the frame, and I use a leftover piece of steel pipe to operate the levers. Eye bolts connect it to the pulleys that lift the car. The levers that stop the car in case of a broken rope are made from square steel tubing. Each lever has a spring that's guided and held in place by a pivoting pipe. When the rope is under tension, the levers retract, but when it's released, the springs push the levers into place. The levers don't do anything without arrestor hooks. In case of an accident, they'll need to stop the entire weight of the car, so I build them from sturdy strap hinges bolted to the side of the car. Tabs are welded to the back of the hinge to attach a turnbuckle that connects to the lever. The turnbuckle makes it easy to adjust how far the hooks deploy. Finally, I heat up the end of the hinges and bend hooks so they can actually catch something. For the short length of track that I'm building, I make a sandwich from 2x4s and 2x2s. I use lengths of steel rebar as the cross pieces for arrestor hooks to catch on. I make the track square, straight, and sturdy by reinforcing it with angled support beams. Finally, I add rolling guides to keep the car aligned with the arresting track. I make sure everything is comfortably reinforced and tighten all the bolts. Then I run some tests before I trust myself to it. With a dozen successful tests, it's time to test it myself. I don't have an assistant and good rope is expensive. So I pull myself up and release the rope when I'm ready to test the brakes. I was pretty confident I wouldn't fall too far, but it was still pretty harrowing. Elijah Otis's safety elevator changed the world. Skyscrapers became practical. Cities could grow upward as well as outward. Top floors went from being the cheapest real estate to the most sought after. Today, Elevators safely transport billions of passengers every day. I'm Steve Hofer for Make Inventions.